It is counted by some a weakness in princes to have favourites, but it is, of all others, the best remedy against ambitious great ones. For when the way of pleasuring and displeasuring lieth by the favourite, it is impossible any other should be over great. So he says that um, it is not actually a very good thing. It is often considered a weakness for a prince to have favourites. Because uh, to have a person who can influence you over much is definitely a weakness. But then he says, having a favourite to a certain extent can keep ambitious people away from you. Because um, if a king or a prince has a favourite, all his opinions, most of his opinions at least, uh, that is who he should pleasure, pleasure means who he should favour, displeasure, who he should punish, all that to a great extent depends on his favourite's opinion. He will not often act against what his favourite says. Now we have read about queens who have been favourites of kings, who gave bad advice to uh, the king and misguided them. Uh, you have so many stories of men who were greatly influenced by their favourites. So then, if there is a favourite, then uh, nobody else, either this favourite will see to it that nobody else should be over great, that nobody else uh, gains more influence than himself. So a favourite would jealously guard his place and he will not allow another person to grow more influential than himself. So to a certain extent, having a favourite will keep uh, ambitious people at a safe distance from a prince. So that is one method. Another means to curb them uh, is to balance them by others as proud as they are. Okay. Another means is that when you, when you uh, employ, when you uh, appoint an ambitious man here, see that you em employ another one, this side too, so that this man will always be challenged by this one and they will always kind of see that they don't get the better of each other. They would always pull each other down. So another means to curb them is to balance them. Curb is to restrict them. Uh, is to balance them by others as proud as they. But then there must be some middle counsellors to keep things steady. For without that ballast, the ship will roll too much. So he says that when you have two ambitious men on either side, uh, what happens is that things might become a little troublesome. Because you need to have some middle counsellors, people who are quite pliable, uh, who will um, kind of, um, who uh, are not overly ambitious, but who are sensible enough. So that, otherwise, you know, it's a, he makes the comparison to a ship. Uh, when all the weight is put onto one side, what is the danger? The ship will sink because it will just topple over and it would sink. And so in order to maintain the balance of the weight, maintain equilibrium, what is done in the ship? Ballast is kept. Ballast is uh, weight, some kind of heavy thing. It might be uh, uh, huge barrels filled with water uh, so that it can be emptied when it's not needed or it can be some heavy uh, material. Uh, so when there is luggage, there is ballast or is also kept in the right place so that the ship doesn't topple over. Same way when a king employs ambitious people, he should see that he also employs less ambitious people to keep a balance, to maintain a balance. At the least, a prince may animate and inure some meaner persons to be, as it were, scourges to ambitious men. So. Uh, uh, it is always advisable for the king to animate and inure, means to train and to harden some meaner persons, men of lower ranks, to be threats to ambitious men. So when you appoint ambitious men or when you have ambitious men in your circles, it is always safe to train a few uh, men of lower ranks to counter them. So in case of an emergency, you would have somebody on your side to support you.
as for having of them obnoxious now obnoxious today in the present meaning means highly objectionable or somebody that who is offensive something that you don't like but those days in bacon's times uh, it had another meaning it is an obsolete meaning now obnoxious meant liable to punishment or censure Li liable to punishment or censure that is ambitious men should always be uh, kept under the threat of uh, ruin in the sense that uh, you should the king should always give this feeling to the ambitious man that if he goes against the king he will be ruined the king should threaten him should inform him warn him that if you turn against me you will be done for i will destroy you so that uh, warning should always be given as for having of them obnoxious to ruin if they be of fearful natures it may do well and especially if the ambitious man is a little timid this will work very well he will not at any time try to uh, uh, rise against the king but if they be stout and daring it may precipitate their designs and prove dangerous but if the ambitious man is a very daring and a courageous man this kind of a warning might precipitate their designs and prove dangerous precipitate means uh, they would kind of speed up their designs and they would become dangerous so this tactic of threatening them uh, to ruin will work only in the case of ambitious men who are uh, timid it will not work with ambitious men who are very daring because if you give them such a warning immediately they will try to do something to get rid of you as for the pulling of them down if the affairs require it and that it may not be done with safety suddenly the only way is the interchange continually of favors and disgraces whereby they may not know what to expect and be as it were in a wood if the prince or the king wants to pull them down that is to remove uh, an ambitious person from his office if the affairs require it so if uh, such a situation arises where uh, he is to be removed from office it may not be done with safety suddenly so he says it is not safe to do it suddenly it's not as if you go one fine morning and tell this man okay you are dismissed don't do it that way that is not the safe way to do so then what do we do the only way is the interchange continually of favors and disgraces whereby they may not know what to expect and be as it were in a wood so when you know that a person is ambitious you have to have some pre planning about how you behave with him what you have to do with these ambitious people is that you have to keep changing your favors means uh, sometimes you should be very uh, good to them you should offer them favors you should support whatever they say at other times with no reason you should find fault with them you should disgrace them so you should keep doing this on and off until finally the man is so confused that he doesn't know what to expect from you and he would be like a man in the wood a man who is lost in the wood especially if it is dark he wouldn't know which way to go because he'll see all kind of shadows he will not be able to distinguish a, a shadow from a tree and so he will be totally bewildered that would be the condition of an ambitious man if um, he is treated in this manner if there is an interchange of favors and disgraces and so finally if he is removed from office too he will not be surprised because this has been going on for some time so that is the way in which uh, a prince has to deal with ambitious people the next paragraph of ambitions it is less harmful the ambition to prevail in great things than that other to appear in everything for that breeds confusion and mars business so if a person is ambitious uh, in great things in any one field that is less dangerous but then there are some people who want to get involved in everything they have ambitions about everything such people are troublesome because they create confusion and they also obstruct smooth functioning of things because they interfere and meddle with everything 
but yet it is less danger to have an ambitious man stirring in business than in great dependences. So he says that uh, it is less dangerous when an ambitious man is constantly engaged in something uh, than an ambitious man who has garnered a large number of supporters. So a man who is kind of lost in his purpose, who is uh, doing something, uh, working towards an aim, he is less dangerous compared to the other man, the other ambitious man who has a lot of supporters, who, had, who has over the years cleverly garnered a large number of supporters. Such an ambitious man who also has support of others is dangerous. He that seeketh to be eminent amongst noblemen hath a great task, but that is ever good for the public. But he that plots to be the only figure amongst ciphers is the decay of a whole age. So he says that if a man is ambitious to be eminent amongst able men, if he is uh, fighting for a place among great men, that is a difficult task, but actually that is good for the public. Because having many eminent men, trying to be one of them is good for uh, the nation. Uh, and so because they great men of course will definitely be great in all aspects and so having great men to compete with is a good thing and it is good for the nation too but a man an ambitious man who plots to be the only figure among ciphers can be a decay of a whole age so cipher is a zero a man who's good for nothing so in some cases Everybody who is on the top might turn out to be ciphers. Nobody would be of any value. Uh, everybody would be fools and uh, people who are, uh, who are ambitious but people of no stuff. So such a case is dangerous for a nation because that means that there are no good men left. So that's the idea there. It is a good thing if a man tries to become the best among efficient people. But it is extremely harmful if a man tries to become the only leader among bad people. It is a sign that the country is deteriorating where there are no good men to compete with. Now the last uh, paragraph. Honor had three things in it. The vantage ground to, to do good the approach to kings and principal persons and the raising of a man's own fortunes. So if you, if you uh, um, raise yourself to an honorable height or if you achieve honor, there are three things that come along with it. If you are, honor if you are an honorable man, if you are accepted as an honorable man, there are three benefits that you can gain. One, the vantage ground to do good. So if you are an ambitious man and if you have turned out to be an honorable man, you are always on the vantage ground to do good. That is, you will be in a position. Vantage, you know, is a, a place uh, from where you can get a good view of everything around you. So if you are accepted as an honorable man, you have uh, the advantage of doing good things because you have power with you and uh, you can use your power to do good things. The second benefit is that you have access to important people, like you have access to the king, you have access to all the important personalities. Uh, and so that is an added benefit. And the third thing is the raising of a man's own, for own fortunes. Your own fortunes will increase. You can become wealthier. You can uh, be appointed to great positions. You can uh, amass wealth. Uh, you will have more power. So all the, these are things that come along with honor. He that hath the best of these intentions when he aspireth is an honest man. And that prince that can discern of these intentions in another that aspireth is a wise prince. So then, if a man who aspireth, the aspiration here is ambition. So if a man uh, has ambitions of with these intentions, um, and so if, if uh, that is a good thing. 
to to aspire that you would become powerful so that you can do good for others so that you can have access to king so that you can raise your own fortunes that is actually a good thing because there is no evil intentions involved and um, a man who has such aspirations is an honest man and uh, a prince who finds or who knows who discerns that um, a certain person who is ambitious has all these good intentions he is a wise prince so that such a prince will be able to select the correct men because ambition in itself is not a bad thing but what is the purpose of ambition is what determines the whole thing so if you want if you are ambitious to do good things you are actually a good man and you would be an asset to a prince and a nation and so it would be uh, a wise prince who can discern such aspirations in an ambitious man generally let princes and states choose such ministers as are more sensible of duty than of using so when a prince chooses ministers he should choose people who are more sensible of duty that is who are more interested who are more sincere to their duty than to the gains of their office than of using in the sense uh, they should be men who are more anxious to fulfill their duties than to gain promotions they should be men who are not interested in their own well being their first and pri uh, and um, primary interest would be in doing their duty so a king should choose such men as their ministers and such as love business rather upon conscience than upon bravery so he should also choose ambitious men who are genuinely interested in their work than in showing off or displaying their bravery and abilities that is what he means by such as love business business here means work rather upon conscience than upon bravery who have a genuine uh, love for what they are doing and who are not interested in showing off or in display of their bravery and abilities and let them discern a busy nature from a willing mind and a good a wise a clever prince should also be able to discern a busy nature busy nature here means a man who meddles uh, who is uh, very nosy who interferes in everything so they should be able they should find out whether this man okay he's got ambition but is he very nosy then avoid him because earlier it was mentioned that it is okay if a man is ambitious to do great things but if he wants to put his nose everywhere that will create trouble so if the ambitious man has a busy nature a meddling nature avoid him instead choose a man with a willing mind a willing mind is a man is a person with a mind willing to work okay so that is how he concludes the essay and we know that bacon doesn't bother about uh, conclusions either he just stops when he has finished what he wants to say so uh, he this is uh, you know quite an enlightening essay isn't it he told us about ambition and uh, about uh, how ambition can be good and can be dangerous and uh, it is best it, the, the, whole, the whole thing is actually an advice to uh, to princes or people in power and when they select their employees they have to Uh, uh take care of such things and then he told us about uh, areas where we need ambitious men and he told us that since we need them how uh, we should keep them in check so that they don't become threats later on and then he also told us about how uh, you can curb how you can bridle or curb their ambition and then of how uh, sometimes ambition can be good and sometimes it can be bad and then he also says that when you select an ambitious person into your employ oh, what are the things that you should be aware of so this is a complete kind of a guide book to uh, a, a prospective employer and so that again is an essay yeah. it's it's a tumbling out of ideas from a very uh, clever and a sharp mind so that is the end of the essay of ambition